guys, Cliff here, and welcome back to the channel. I want to tell you about a project which I had planned to do this winter, uh, but I brought it forward and we are going to be building one each. And what is this model? It's the De Havilland 2 Airco DH2 Pusher fighter from the First World War. Now, this model was built, uh, sorry, this model was designed by Mike Roach. You can see wingspan, 38 inch, 99 centimeters for a geared 400 motor. Um, we won't be using that, we'll be using an outrunner and more modern materials on the tail boom, especially instead of birch, it's going to be carbon. And it was originally designed for three channel. We're going to make it a four channel. And, um, and the finished aeroplane, in case you're not sure what it, I'm talking about, is going to look like this. This is the Micro Aces model, uh, which does fly beautifully. And that's about a third of the size that we will be building ours to. I say we because I'm going to be building it at the same time as another YouTuber, Nick from the Baron Flights. I'll link to his channel below. Um, we're going to be building one each. Now, uh, Nick builds a little bit slower than I build. So how are we going to do this? Well, what I thought I would do is to film uh, the build bits as we go, just like I normally do. But I'm going to not upload them every week. I'll save all the video up and I'll just do one long build video when it's finished. Uh, probably a build video and then a covering video and then a flying video. We are going to be doing a weekly roundup of what we've done. We're going to be uh, talking together on the screen. You'll be able to see us both and we'll be discussing what we've been doing all week. Um, now, Nick's going to be trying to pick my brains onto how and why I did it certain ways and hopefully doing it better than what I did. And I should be laughing at uh, Nick's efforts. <laughs> no, we'll be at well, what we plan to do is have a good laugh about this. It's going to be great. We're going to assemble both models and you never know. We may even end up flying together. But Nick does live three hours up the motorway, so we'll have to see about that. But yeah, really excited to make a start on this model. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, the plans I've download, downloaded from uh, Outer Zone. I'll link to that down below as well. Uh, but um, yeah, it's a lovely flyer. I plan to crack on and Nick plans to crack on too, I guess. <laughs> so there we go. Join us and follow along. It's going to be great. Cheers, guys. Bye. OK, guys, I've got enough to be getting on with. Two fuselage sides, battery floor, some formers, um, some out of ply. Plan specify 1.5 mil, but here's some light pliers, about two, two and a half. I've had to change it around a little bit. Um, the plans show a cutout for the Speed 400 motor and gearbox. I'm changing it. I'm putting a bulkhead here for the back of my motor, which is this one. And um, so I've got to move the bulkhead back and I'll make that out of uh, ply, obviously. But for now, I've got two fuselage sides. I'll build up, say, on that one first. And F1 goes there. Uh, what I'm going to do is to glue it up with uh, CA and then run beads of white glue down. That works very well. So let's get building. Simple as that. Simple and quick as that. It's getting pulled right in there, as I hoped. So put that there, put that there. So say I will be running in white glue over the joint, so it's going to be nice and strong. I like it. I'm going to put the motor up here. The shaft on this motor is distinctly bent. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to replace it with a bit of 4mm piano wire. But I'm going to extend it out to take the free spinning dummy engine. That's my plan. 
The other thing I'm going to do, or consider doing, I should say, is instead of putting the cross brace elevator control rod going through, there's no reason why I can't have a servo down here with the um, top of the servo coming straight out with the horn and direct drive and just have um, a couple of the two servos up in the transmitter. No motor, that's the motor bolt head. Like that, and that's going to go on there, like that. So drill a little hole in the middle of that, but that goes there. And this one goes in there, like that. And we got a pretty cool looking fuselage there. I'll just run a bead of white glue all around the joints and that will be the fuselage mainly constructed. Just need to fit the struts, make and fit the struts. So everybody has their own method of fixing motors. Uh, I like to keep it really simple. Instead of having a, a captive nut on the back, I use self-tapping screws. And they've got a built-in washer to spread the load. Really quick, really simple. I've never had one come undone or anything. And uh, saves a lot of messing about. Motor on. Uh, I've extended the shaft. Piece of, uh, the, the one I took out the motor. I've had the motor for ages, but I've bent the shaft. So I've just replaced it. It's four mil diameter steel it's quite easy to press out the only thing is you've got to do is to cut a little groove in it for the circlip and I do that using my Dremel with a little cutting disc on but you could use a hacksaw if you wanted it doesn't have to be that perfect just deep enough for the circlip and then a little flat file a little flat again use the Dremel just for the um, Allen locking bolt is that an Allen key? Yeah, the little pinch bolt anyway there. So now I've got a nice long shaft. I can put my dummy engine on and still put a prop on the back. I've cut the shape out from the plan. It seems pretty close. I shall now cut this out of, transfer it and cut it out of 164 ply. And it should be just about ready to glue on. But before I do that, I do want to stick in these um, inner cabane struts and reinforce them on the inside. And then I'll put that on the top. Cheers. All right, I've got some insulation uh, foam here, which I've sanded ready to glue on. I've cut out a slot just in case I need to move the battery forward. So that will line up in there and hopefully I can sand it without breaking through to the inner compartment. So I'm just going to glue them on. I'm going to use epoxy for this because white glue would do it. But uh, I want to get sand in today, so uh, I want to crack on and get it glued. Right, that bit goes on there. Oh, just put my finger on that bit. Right this bit here goes on. There, approximately. Down a little bit. There we go. So I've got a nice little hole in the front in case I need to push the battery forward. My little Lewis gun. Quite pleased with it. It's come out quite nicely. It looked great when it's all painted up. Quite a big piece actually. Using the template. I cut a piece of plywood out to 0.4 millimeters to the same um, plan and I put it on this bottle overnight dampened just to try and ease it into shape a little bit easier I don't know if it's actually going to work it's starting to spring out quite well which I don't want it to do so so that didn't really work but you know it was worth a go I, I damped it thoroughly, of course, but 
So that's going to go on there like that and then round there like that. So the basis is there. I think that's quite good. That will glue on there nicely. Um, but before I glue that on, I've got to make the struts because it all has to be tailored in around. And I've got to, oh, I've got to put, oh, I just broke that there. For the third time, actually, I've broken it. Um, I've got to put reinforcements on on the boltswood where the struts go, and that will stop that snapping as well. So what I think I'll do is take the motor off and um, glue that back on and make some struts and get those in, and then I can glue on the top skin. Right, so I'm just catching up with something I should have glued in. Um, when I was building the fuse on sides, they're just laid over the plan and glued in. Draw it on the other side and then I should be able to turn this over and glue these into that side. Little update guys, little update for you. I put on the joiner, just a piece of paper around the front and the straps that go across the back of the uh, fuselage, which are just plywood. And this says headrest on the uh, block fairing rather. It says block fairing, but I'm, I don't know. It's got a little nobule on some of the pictures I've seen. I wonder if it was sort of a fuel tank. But anyway, there's a scale feature. I've popped in the rudder server as well. You see that? There we go. Uh, I was going to put it there, but I had to put it quite high because I didn't want it to clash with the battery sliding in possibly. So it's quite high. Um, and... Uh, I'm just going to have a go now at tissue in the front. I'm happy with that. Good progress there. I've used the yellow tissue there because it's slightly more flexible, but it's all going to be painted anyway, so and white on the sides and I've left this completely because it's close grain so it's going to paint lovely and um, just got to cut out the foot step and the and the uh, lower main spar slot some stitching to go on down the sides and along the top and then I can put some paint on so quite pleased with that guys quite pleased just for a bit of fun let's put the machine gun in place Fabulous. Really great. Oh, glorious. Lovely colour. Lovely colour. It's quick drying, it's matte. I haven't made a bottom hatch yet. Jumping the gun a little bit, but the second coat will cover up any. Uh, I suppose I ought to paint that dark green in there as well. I like it. I like that a lot. So let's put that in there and keep that off the paper and paint the back end. Okay, that looks sweet. Um, I'm going to paint inside the engine bay. I did consider black, but I think dark green is the thing to paint in there. Right, we'll let that set off hard and come back to it and take a look, but it will need a second coat, I can see that. In the meanwhile, I'll, I'll find some yellow paint to put on the bottom. When I say yellow, I don't mean yellow as such. It's just got to be that sort of colour of the linen, which is um, that sort of uh, almost oh, it's linen colour, pinky almost. I think 
the stitching's going to look okay. I've got a roundel to go on here yet as well, which will be a nice little touch. So I might get on with that. Cut the bits out for that. As I've just stuck the four bits of tissue on the side that makes up one roundel, one big white disc, and that keeps the blue looking nice as well. And then the blue goes over the white and the red over the white. So that's looking pretty cool. It's had um, a couple of coats of matte lacquer. So I'm looking quite pleased. Stitching looks okay. The thing I've just realised is I haven't put the number four on the nose and I didn't put it on. So I'm going to have to do that. And the same with the numbers on the on the rudder. Uh, I'll cut out a red tissue and see how it looks. Just soldered up the undercarriage, made up a little jig for it to sit in to make it a little bit easier. Um, but there we go. The uh, spreader bar, should we call it. I've just pre-drilled the ends and epoxied them and then I'll bind them when it's done. The uh, undercarriage is complete, tissued and painted and glued together. The suspension is done. So I'm going to drill some holes in here and then when I'm ready, when the wing's on, I'll stitch it around and the back hole's already drilled. And that will be the undercarriage mounted. I've also added gussets there, look, and at the back just to beef up the fuselage where it mounts. What I need to do now is to cut these ribs so that I can fit them, fit the quarter inch ply in. So I've got to cut another sixteenth of an inch off either side.